Hey, what's up guys? James of Breacher's Customs here. I'm just going to go over part two of the video. Um, this is actually cleaning the upper. So uh, I assembled the upper to the lower. That way you could just watch this video if you want to. So here you go. All right, first off, we're going to make sure the magazine well is empty. Uh, the bolt is actually forward right now. So assume it's loaded. Um, I'm going to pull your bolt back. Uh, make sure the magazine well is still empty and there's nothing in the chamber. Uh, let your bolt go forward. Um, on this model, you're actually going to extend your Maxim brace. Uh, this is actually a Breacher's Customs AR-9 uh, done in blue geocam for a retired law enforcement officer. So uh, here is your takedown pin. Uh, this is the side that you actually push. This is the side that pops out. Here is your front or your rear takedown pin. Uh, so all I'm going to do is push on that right there. And I'm going to push on the rear takedown pin right there. And on the enhanced or extended takedown pins that we use, um, it actually allows it to push out just a little bit. Uh, hard to see, but you can get a better grip on this pin and then stick your nail under this pin right here um, and pull that one out okay this uh, lower uh, the upper does have a little bit of forward tension on it because of the buffer um, that is actually a good thing with the buffer having tension on the bolt or pushing the upper receiver forward um, you might have to push this back to get your takedown pin in and out a little bit easier keep some tension on it um, when I say it's a good thing, if you had a gap, um, this is obviously um, exaggerated, but if you had a gap in between your buffer and your bolt when it's closed, <coughs> that could cause, cause some malfunctions like bolt bounce. Um, uh, the bolt is moving back and it actually has to slap the bolt before it gets it to move. Um, that absorbs energy and can cause malfunction. So anyway, once you take your takedown pins loose, your upper is now separate from your lower. We did another video of cleaning your lower. Um, so this video is for cleaning your upper. Um, this is a muzzle device. This is called a cherry bomb. This is so you can direct thread a suppressor and still have a muzzle device on it. So a uh, Q suppressor or a uh, Silencer Co. Omega 9K or Omega 45 with a plan B uh, adapter that goes into the back of the suppressor allows you to use this cherry bomb made by Q. Okay, so charging handle, we're going to just unlatch the charging handle itself, which the latch is right there. We're going to pull that back. And then once you pull the charging handle back, the bolt is coming back with it. So you're, once you get the, charge, the bolt back a little bit, you can reach down here and pull your bolt away from the receiver itself. So we'll do, um, we'll clean that one here in a minute. This is actually a breacher's um, bolt uh, made for us. Uh, this is a Radian Raptor charging handle uh, made for, or I should say lasered for us. Um, it pulls out until it stops and then it just gonna go straight down like that and then pull out. There's two little wings right here one on each side and those actually fit in a groove inside the receiver right where my finger is and you can see the groove when you look a little bit when you look in person uh, so this is your receiver um, upper receiver handguard barrel underneath and then muzzle device a uh, good thing to do with this is inside your receiver itself uh, this is your barrel uh, this is your chamber uh, inside the barrel and this is the entrance to the chamber is inside as well. Uh, I'll grab a flashlight so you can kind of see inside it's a little bright a little bit less uh, brightness so you can see your barrel and chamber and everything inside. This little hook right here is for your last round bolt hold open. Uh, try not to damage that. Uh, there is another video of adjustment, uh, how to adjust that. So uh, a good thing to do with this is if you grab a, a boar snake, um, this is a boar snake. It's labeled what it's for. They make them specifically for nine mil as well. This one is for uh, 35 cal. 
uh, which uh, nine mil nine millimeters is uh, I believe 357 thousandths of an inch. So a 35 cal uh, boar snake. Um, stick the weighted in end weighted end in the barrel and then pull this through okay um, this isn't this isn't super tight so they might make one that's a little bit larger for a specific nine mil but if you pull it through that tends to clean your barrel up really good um, it's got some steel brushes on it that helps brush carbon out um, another thing to do with this is if you take a uh, these uh, swab bits right here you can wipe out any carbon um, you can wipe your uh, barrel uh, entrance to the chamber, the feed ramp, and then you can also uh, scrub your chamber. Um, if you have a, a chamber brush for a 9 mil or even an AR-15, um, this is designed to go in the chamber. This is going to go where the bolt would rotate on an AR-15. Um, if you stick this in the back, and then push this in, you can actually clean the chamber itself uh, with the steel brush, okay? Um, I'm sure they make one specifically uh, for, for nines, but I use the one for the AR-15 chamber brush, okay? Um, so that's pretty much it. You can put lube. If you grab these swabbits, I put lube on here and here. And then I actually lube the inside where the bolt's gonna ride, put a little bit of lube in the barrel, um, lube back in here, here, and a little bit where your charging handle rides as well. So once you got that lubed, then that's about all you need to do with the upper receiver. Um, this is a bolt, okay? Um, it does not have a rotating bolt head, uh, so uh, this is typically called a bolt. You could call it a bolt carrier. Um, but there is no bolt in this uh, assembly uh, like there is an AR-15 bolt carrier group uh, or BCG. Um, so some things to look at is your extractor. Okay, this right here is your extractor. Um, if you have a fail to eject, uh, look at this piece right here. It might be broken off. It's it's not super common, but it does happen. Uh, this needs to have spring tension on it. It needs to uh, hold the round. Um, if I had a round handy, I would show you. Um, but anyway, your carrier is right here. Uh, the firing pin on a nine mil setup is actually spring loaded. Uh, so pushing down on the firing pin itself should spring back when you do this, okay? And what, what that does is keeps the firing pin away from the primer. If you put this bolt back together without that spring and you put the firing pin in, that firing pin is now allowed to move and can actually give you a runaway, meaning that firing pin is just gonna sit and bounce in there because it's a blowback gun. This bolt can go back and then as the bolt is coming back forward, the firing pin actually pushes against the primer and being a light primer uh, on pistol caliber rounds, uh, it could make it go off. Um, so something to make sure of is basically is you want to put that spring back in. To get your firing pin out, um, on this side of the bolt, you have your cotter pin that goes in. Uh, right here, you have the head of the cotter pin. Um, what I'm going to do for the video is just take a punch and I'm going to start pushing this firing pin, uh, retaining pin out a little bit, okay? Once you get it to start to move, you can see the head of the cotter pin right there. I'm just gonna take a punch and I'm gonna put, pull this pin out and I'm gonna put my finger in the bolt, okay? Right where the firing pin is. So once you pull this pin out, you'll feel that firing pin pop against your finger. Not hard, so don't worry about it, um, not a big deal. Okay, so since this has a weight in the back of it right here that's pinned in with this cotter pin, the firing pin won't drop out straight. Uh, you're gonna have to uh, tilt it forward to get your firing pin to come out. Now, here is your firing pin. All right, I have seen this head break off of a firing pin. The uh, likelihood of it happening is very, very slim, but it can happen. Nine mil uh, blowback guns are very violent. Um, 
inside, so the internal parts need to be pretty good quality. This is your spring. Um, this is what pushes the firing pin back. So it goes in a channel and actually pushes your firing pin away from the primer um, that would come out the end right where that little hole is. That's what your firing pin protrudes through and hits your primer. So um, once you clean inside your firing pin pocket, which is inside here, some swabbits work good, some brushes, whatever you gotta do, get inside, clean that up. Um, there is a bore inside here uh, to clean up, um, get the carbon out, uh, clean your firing pin, make sure it's good to go. Uh, your extractor, this is another uh, piece that would be fairly difficult to move. Uh, so if you are a novice in this, um, you can have someone physically teach you uh, by hand or uh, I can kind of show you. This style is actually a threaded pin. Um, typically, what I do see um, is actually a roll pin. So this Call Valley bolt right here actually has a roll pin right there. And you're going to get a bench vise or a vise block um, that they sell that's something like this. I think Real Avid sells this one. Uh, what you're going to do is have your vice block, uh, your bench block laying on the bench, and then you can put your uh, bolt in there and then take a roll pin punch or a punch, and you're going to punch this pin out, and it'll come out the bottom. So you can see right there, there is a uh, the bottom of the roll pin. So if you punch this pin out, it will come out the bottom and that will expose your extractor. And then there is a heavy duty spring back here. Um, you have to push, once, once you clean all this channel out, the firing pin actually goes through that channel as well. Once you clean that out and you put your extractor back in, you're gonna have to push in back here to align your bore up for your roll pin. And then you're going to push your roll pin in and have to uh, hammer it back in with a roll pin punch. Um, just to get it to seat. And then uh, you're gonna, if you push this extractor in, you'll see your bore line up and see the daylight poking through that roll pin hole. Um, if you push this extractor in, you can align those bores up a little bit easier and then punch that uh, pin back in. Once that's in, make sure your extractor has some good spring tension on it. So you're going to push on this hook right here. This is called your extractor. That's what grips around the case and pulls it out of the chamber. Um, make sure it has good spring tension. Uh, and then you're going to wipe this whole thing down. Make sure it's nice and clean. And then a good place to lube this is uh, this channel right here. This channel right here is where the, uh, the ejector which is in another video, this is your ejector right here that rides in this channel right here, okay? So lube that, lube that, you're gonna lube this bottom piece right here, this bottom ledge. This is where your hammer rides and what pushes your hammer to reset. So the hammer actually, when you pull the trigger, it comes up through this groove, smacks the firing pin out the front, and uh, that's what uh, fires your round. So make sure this is all clean, lube the body uh, in and out, just a little bit of either thin film grease. Um, we use this uh, go juice grease uh, as well. And um, somebody's at the office door, just so you know. We use um, other grease as well. Uh, this um, Slip 2000 Extreme Weapons Grease is really good. Um, this uh, Slip 2000 uh, gun wipes, those are pretty good. A good cleaner. It's more of a cleaner, uh, more of a lube than it is a cleaner, so it will leave a shiny film on your gun if you do wipe it down. Um, so putting the firing pin back in real quick, once everything's clean and lubed, you're going to drop it in the bore right there. Okay. Then... Once you drop that in, you're actually going to take your cotter pin, which is right there. You see the big hole, 
see the small hole right there. Obviously the head can't fit in the small hole. So you're gonna put it in the big hole. That's what she said. Put it in the big hole and then push your firing pin in. See the spring tension. Once you push and hold that in, then you're going to push your, fire, your uh, retention pin or your cotter pin in. What I like to do is put these in uh, horizontally with the uh, barrel or the bolt, sorry. Then you can watch the other end of the firing pin go into the hole, okay? If it goes in nice and smooth and comes out both sides of this pin, come out this bore, then uh, uh, you know it went in correctly. I have seen people hammer these pins in and it actually bends this pin down here inside your firing pin bore and uh, messes up the pin and then also causes malfunction. So um, once this is cleaned and lubed, then you're gonna take your upper receiver and you're gonna take your charging handle, uh, hold your upper receiver upside down, okay? Inside here is a little groove. So I'm going to put the firing or the, uh, the charging handle in, into the groove and then I'm gonna drop it in, push it forward and then I'm gonna take the bolt and put it in like this and slap it all the way in. And once your charging handle latches, make sure um, everything moves nice and smooth. You can actually relatch your charging handle, push your bolt all the way in. Now you're good to go. Take your lower, take your fire, your uh, uh, takedown pins, take those all the way out. Then you are going to take your upper receiver right here, drop it into your lower, and then you're gonna, like I said earlier, you're gonna have to push back a little bit. And what I do is just hold it against your fat belly, my fat belly, and then uh, put your takedown pins in, rock your bolt back a couple times, everything's good. Um, again, making sure there's nothing in the chamber, nothing in the magwell, rotate it off safe, and then pull your trigger, and make sure everything sounds good. Rock your uh, charging handle back, pull the trigger again, do that again one more time, and then you'll have to put your charging handle back, recharge your hammer on your trigger, and then now you can rotate it on safe, collapse your stock, and you are ready to go. Put this back to back in the safe, go shoot it, do whatever you need to, enjoy your gun. So, if you guys got any questions, please hit me up, uh, info at Breachers LLC, or find me on Instagram, uh, Breachers Customs. All right. Thanks, guys.